<clears throat> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. <clears throat> Hope everybody has had a good day. It has been a very busy but productive day, uh, all things considered. Um, I've been talking to you guys pretty consistently about some pretty uh, prevalent and relevant issues within our community. And I want to follow up on that. I haven't talked to you guys all day. I've been caught up in trying to get some things done. Uh, but uh, as you know, we are in the middle of a fundraiser. And so I am asking for you to support the work we do. For those who may not understand or know what we do, uh, you can look on the Odyssey Project website at www.theodysseyproject21.top. That's www.theodysseyproject21.top. Uh, and you can check it out. You can check out uh, the Black Man Lead Program, Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, the Black Code of Conduct, the Blueprint uh, 1.0, uh, which is the Blueprint for Black Empowerment. Uh, and so much more you can see what we have been doing for years i've been in this game uh for decades putting in work before work uh was a catchphrase and you know and everybody had a channel and all of this other stuff uh this has been my passion since before i was an adult since watching dr francis Cress wilson uh, my 11th grade year on the Phil Donahue show. I've been going ever since, uh, ever since, and I have developed uh, a number of programs, including Black Men Leading. We're asking for your support. Uh, when you support this program, you allow us to socialize. Matter of fact, someone came to me this morning with 10 teen males under the age of 18 uh, who need help um, on an emotional level, on a psychological level, and I took it. Uh, and so uh, I don't know how exactly we're going to work it out, but that's 10 boys that are going to need some help, and I'm committed and I'm all in. Um, also, my sister contacted me, and there's a 52-year-old man. So actually this one, if anybody can... Uh, tell me of something that we can do. There's a 52-year-old man uh, in the Houston area, has a 14-year-old son, uh, is saying that he is a victim of abuse. And, and um, sorry. Uh, saying that he is a victim of abuse and he is needing some support and resources, sources, wraparound services, obviously some assistance with housing. There's a story behind it. Uh, if you know of anything happening in the Houston area, somewhere near the Houston area, that can be a resource to him. Uh, on the immediate end, while I work out something on the long-term end, I definitely would appreciate it. Uh, you can email me or reach out to me. Again, you should be able to contact me through the site. Okay, now we got all that out of the way. I am so tired of hearing about death in our community on so many levels. Before I get to the violence, let's just talk about the fact that we're not taking care of ourselves, that black men have the lowest life expectancy out of anybody in America. And that's the first thing that actually popped into my mind. And I heard that Kevin Samuels had passed away. Was damn, there go another one under 60. Seemingly in good shape, condition, just gone. You know, and obviously I'm like, the first question to come to mind when that happens as frequently, frequently as it has happened in the last six months, first thing pops in my mind that they get that, you know, that Pope. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a lot more to it than that. We're not taking care of ourselves. Hey, I, I'm a, a walking testimony to that only by the grace of God and the fact that I was an athlete and had uh, an athlete's heart. 
um, that I survived five heart attacks two years ago. In a course of seven, over a course of seven days, that prompted a process of getting myself together. I'm happy to report that I'm down almost 25 pounds. Uh, I'm pushing for another 20. And then I'll start sculpting and doing and seeing where I'm at right there and make adjustments. But I had to do something and, uh, you know, I've really, really cranked it up last you know, month. And so I'm going to take it to another level, 29 June. My thing is my birthday is in July, July 25th, I'll be 55. And, and I want to do 55 the way I did 40. I want to come in like, yeah. And so that's what I'm going to do. But we have problems in that area. We're not eating right. We're not exercising. We're not taking care of ourselves. But then there's this side that we really need to address that we don't want to talk about how we're killing each other now the first thing is it's easy to jump over and talk about young black males because there's a problem there it is definitely a problem there that's why i created black men lead there's a problem there there is a problem because when you give young black males free reign with no identity with no understanding of who they are with no purpose and expect them to take the transition of moving out of childhood through puberty into adolescence without understanding the physiological transformation that's taking place, the psychological and emotional transformation that's taking place, and you expect them to manage it without having a proper guideline, a blueprint, or a model for which to follow. We are failing them. Okay, let me explain something to you. What I did with my own biological sons, I also do with young boys at Black Men Lee. I teach these young boys when they approach seven, eight, nine years old, that they're about to go into a stage called puberty. And in this stage, they're going to start creating uh, testosterone at a higher level. Uh, it's gonna cause their voice to change. First, it will probably crack and then it will grow deep. Uh, they will develop the capacity to develop muscle at a more rapid rate and larger and stronger than the females. Uh, they will also have a tendency to be a little bit more emotionally and physically aggressive. And I say there is a purpose for that. The purpose is you have become bigger and stronger so that you can be a physical protector. There are strengths that she has that she will utilize as well, but where you are going to use this change is in a role that was designed for you uh, before time. It, it, you have become bigger and stronger and more aggressive. The, the bigger and stronger is so that you have the capacity to protect. The aggressive is so that you have the will to, that you have a natural inclination to move in and strike when something that you're supposed to be protecting is in danger or in threat or to defend yourself. The problem is when there's no proper socialization, when you don't teach this, when you don't teach them that, hey, you actually have a purpose, you're extremely important to the very ecosystem of our existence, then they will get up and that aggression will be turned inward, it will be turned outward at anything and everything because he doesn't understand it and because he's frustrated because his natural yearning is to have purpose. We're failing in that area. That's why black men as lead is so important. But we're also failing in the fact that we got a lot of parents harming children. And we don't seem to be as outraged as we should. It's almost like we've become desensitized to black death. And that's a problem. That's a problem. We are becoming increasingly aloof and indifferent to our own suffering. That's a problem. And that's again, because we are not dealing with the issues from the past. We're not dealing with the fact that we've dragged trauma through generations. We're not dealing with the fact that we've got hurt and pains that we are not addressing. We're not dealing with the fact that there's a problem with incest and childhood sexual abuse in our homes and at, a, at a rate that nobody wants to talk about or admit. We're not admitting that uh, there's abuse 
uh, domestic music violence in the home. We don't want to talk about what's going on. We only want to say and uh, deal with the things that we're comfortable with. And the problem is that you don't win in life by only moving through the corners and the corridors of comfort. You win in life because you go through the hard planes and you address the issues that have to be addressed. You deal with them and you handle them uh, with specific care and concern. It's an absolute must that you do this. It's an absolute must that you sit up and you understand that there's work to do in the black community and that we are not going to advance. Uh, no matter how much we yap yap, no matter how much we talk, we're not going to advance until we start investing in our youth. We're not going to advance until we start to invest in a way that we can rebuild the black family nucleus, until we can re-emphasize the importance of collectively rearing our children, collectively moving, and being financially responsible when we procreate. We've got to understand the dynamic of poverty in a way that we can combat poverty because poverty is playing a major role in these actions as well. You, man, the worst thing you can do is merge poverty and trauma. I mean, talking about there's no escapism, so the, the only escapism you got is drugs and alcohol. And those are not good combinations for dealing with issues. And we're wondering what's happened. It's so predictable. And it's so frustrating because it's that predictable and yet we do nothing. I mean, I, I mean, and it's not just me. Yes, I've put in tens upon tens upon tens, literally of thousands of hours of thousands of hours of research to gain the type of knowledge I have on serial force displacement, African-American adolescent and young adult male violence, mass incarceration, uh, socioeconomic frustration uh, and miseducation of our youth and so much more uh, that, you know, I have really truly developed this understanding and I've developed these programs and I've worked with other people that I'm proud to say I've worked with and they've done this work and then it's sitting there. It's sitting there. I mean, something as simple as socializing these boys will cut the violence, I mean, by 60 to 70 percent. Do you hear me? Properly socializing black males in large numbers will cut the violence in the inner city by 60 to 70 percent alone. Now you add in other programs and other mechanisms that contribute to that violence. You start to reduce the impact of poverty. That will also uh, uh, happen as you socialize them, because a part of socializing them is so socializing them into financial responsibility. It's, it's socializing them into social responsibility. In other words, you don't procreate and have kids you can't take care of. You don't jump from woman to woman having children. These are things that they have to be taught. These are things that they and shown why, told why, and so that it's clear and so that they assume a responsibility not out of obligation but out of desire out of a desire to be the best that they can possibly be understanding that that is where they should hang their hat because that's going to have the greatest benefit for what their offspring and they should want to and should care about what happens to their children and their children's children and 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 so we have a major problem right now and we can dance around it we can sit up and 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 pretend that it doesn't exist we've got at least 60 percent of our female population reporting that at some point in time during their childhood they were sexually assaulted either raped molested victims of incest and we don't even want to talk about it, much less confront it and deal with the issue. This isn't an old issue. This isn't something that, you know, that happened back in, 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 in Big Mama. No, that's still happening. That's a problem. And then guess what happens? Somebody gets wind of it and reports it. And so CPS comes out. CPS comes out and then CPS 
says, okay, we're gonna take the children. And what the CPS do, they put them in foster care. Guess what the number one mechanism for, guess what the number one mechanism for uh, sex trafficking of young girls is? You guessed it, foster care. Foster care is funneling them out like crazy. And most people don't even realize that. We did the work on that. That's something that actually Marion and I did a special on. We we did a special interview. We have worked with young girls who have been trafficked. Uh, we have gone in depth and dealt with it. Uh, we have worked to actually rescue and recover girls who were being trafficked. I mean, this isn't new to us. I mean, I've been in some places where I might not have walked out or I may have made sure nobody else walked out to get some. We rescued a young lady, may have been two or three months ago. Dude got her in the house, locked up, then got her from somewhere. And that's a problem. But it starts because they're not protected in the home. Before they can ever get there, there's something that drives them to put them in positions where they become vulnerable and easy prey. We've got to talk about these things. We've got to actually have solutions to these problems. We cannot leave our children to fend for themselves. We cannot get out there. The time for, they, she just fast. No. I don't care how fast she is. He shouldn't be messing with her. He's the he's the adult. He should be calling on her, on her behavior, not ex exploiting it. Why are we giving him a pass? Why are we giving her a pass? Because let me tell you something from personal experience. Everything that's happening that's sexually inappropriate with youth ain't happening. It ain't, it's not only happening with men. There are a bunch of women predators out there. There are a bunch of women uh, predators. And I'm telling you that from experience. So there's a lot going on and we're not facing it. And what we don't look at, we don't look at the impact of adverse childhood experiences on the life of the children. We want to talk about how they behave and what's going on with them and how everything is going after they're an, an adults, but we don't want to talk about how they got there and how we could have done something about it to stop it. We, we don't talk about the spike in uh, uh, youth, uh, black youth uh, suicides. Well, uh, we know for a fact that kids who have at least four ACEs, which is four adverse childhood experiences, are 12 times more likely to attempt suicide. So what that tells us is we got a lot of children who are experiencing a lot of childhood trauma and nobody's doing anything to try to address the issue. And then that's playing out. They're not even getting to adulthood because then there's still adulthood problems. In adulthood, they're four times more likely to develop ischemic heart disease. They are three times more likely to develop diabetes. And I can go on down the line of physiological chronic illnesses that they are gonna have to cope with over the course of their lives because of what happened to them as children. And we're not doing anything about it. That's a problem. That's a problem and it's addressable. It's addressable in a number of different ways, but we've got to be invested in our kids. We've got to be invested in programs that are going to support them, not the programs that the city and the government have put out. Those programs don't work. They know they don't work. That's why they back them. They are never going to back things that work because they actually benefit from our suffering. They actually benefit from our oppression. They actually benefit from us not knowing what to do. Uh, uh, a matter of fact, I read a, 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 a meme today that was so accurate. Uh, you know, memes are not always accurate and you always have to do your research, but I knew this for a fact because I've done the research over and over and over and over again. And they said that criminals are actually extremely violent. I mean, criminals are actually extremely valuable in our social society and society. And they are. Why? Careers are built off of criminality. You've got courts, you've got prisons, you've got politicians who uh, build their careers on being tough on crime, solving the crime problem. Uh, criminality has a value to it. So they need criminals. They need people to make other people afraid because when I make you afraid, you back what I want you to back so that I can make you feel safe. And we understand that normally we are the people being used for that. We make up a total of 13.7% of the population and about maybe 6% six, six, six of us are uh, male and yet we make up 40% of the prison population. We are the majority in prison. It's not because we're more criminal minded, it's because we're put in environments that drive and push criminality. 
poverty increases criminality regardless of race. That's been proven in studies in penology and criminology for years. So what? Yeah, you, you create poverty, you're going to create crime. People are not going to sit around and starve to death. People are not going to sit around and look around and watch everybody else thrive and move and they see no opportunities. And the reason they see no opportunities is because we haven't done a good enough job to present them, uh, to give them options, to give them eternity, to show them the, what their brilliance can produce outside of the criminal world. That's our responsibility. That's something that we do at uh, the Odyssey Project. So again, we need your support. We need your work, but we are going to have to come to a place where we are willing to talk about and address those troublesome, uncomfortable conversations and topics about where we're at, what our children are going through, what we're doing, what we're not doing, and what needs to be done. It's that simple. There's no way around it. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here, but I, I just had to talk to you about that. The way that you can support us is in the description box. Go in the description box, look at the link, click the link. Or if you want to give via Cash App, which some people do, you can look in the box and the organization's Cash App is in the box. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.